Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I hope you're having a wonderful week so far, this last week of 2021. How crazy is that? I have got to start remembering to write 2022 in a few days, and that's always that's always a challenge for the first little bit of a new year. Uh, are you one of those people that can actually just start writing it, no problem? I sometimes have had that, but that's usually when I've had a job that means I've had to write it a lot before the year actually starts, and I have not had to do that this year, so we'll see. Not a big deal, but especially now that we don't really write checks, right? Like, it's mostly debit cards and things, and when was the last time you wrote a check? That was always when I got it wrong, was writing checks and having to change to the new year. I'm showing my age. It's all good. Anyway, I hope you're having a good week. I have my seemingly usual post-Christmas sinus infection. What else is new? Spent some time in the urgent care yesterday getting that, getting some prescriptions for that. I know, I know, try not to be jealous of my exciting week. (laughs) I know you are. Um, But speaking of exciting, we do have an author interview today, and this is the author of a new fantasy series. This is the first book in that series. The author is D.A. Mucci. The series is the Ignatius series, and the first book is called Ignatius and the Swords of Nostal, and here is the description on the back. Iggy. 15 years old, is good at three things. Languages, witty retorts, and running from a fight. Now he is faced with his first days of high school. Is there anything worse than high school? When a clever peacemaking verbal volley failed and the guy pulled a switchblade, Iggy took off. A locket he wore warmed up. Suddenly he wasn't in Susquehanna, Pennsylvania anymore. Before he could gather his wits, someone had tackled him. Pinned to the ground, his assailant bade him be quiet. Something was going on just ahead. A horrifying-looking knight in black armor and a strange-looking creature were locked in battle. The knight won. The large dog-bird beast lay dying. Iggy sensed evil had won. When the man let him up, they eased forward to see if the dog-bird beast was dead. No. And with his dying words, the warrior gave Iggy his swords. And thus, Ignatius's adventure began. There you go. So that's a description of the very beginning of the book of the of Ignatius and the Swords of Nosta. Gives you quite a lot. Iggy is a high school freshman. He is small for his size. People keep guessing he is 11 instead of 14 or 15. He is not the the bravest although you know i'm i'm thinking running away from a, a knife fight is probably not a bad idea but he's good at like it said languages witty retorts and running away so he can well maybe not fight another day in this case but he can run away another day that doesn't exactly backfire at uh, his first day of high school but it does have unintended consequences so he finds himself in this very strange land the kingdom of sky he is with um a stranger, LeCue, and they witness this battle between what turns out to be a death knight and a Nosta warrior, which is, you know, the swords of Nosta. Those swords come from this dying warrior who recognizes something in Iggy, gives him the sword. So the person that he is with, LeCue, the person that finds Iggy, I mean, just literally appearing out of nowhere, is flabbergasted. He can't understand why this famed warrior has given his swords to a coward like Iggy when he could have given them to him, like you, someone bigger, older, braver. And 
thus begins Iggy's adventure. From there, we have to find out what is going on. What is this locket that Iggy has has hanging around his neck? What connection does it have to him, to this mysterious land that he finds himself in that is very similar to medieval England or something similar? And we go from there. I like Iggy. He's funny. He, you know, he's he's smart. He is, in some ways, your typical hero at the beginning of a fantasy book. You know, he's going to take part in that hero's journey. He's actually um, not as brave as a lot of the heroes you find in these books. He is inherently kind of... I mean, he's scared of girls, which I get. I totally get <laughs> for a 14-year-old boy. Um, he's scared of girls. He's scared of just kind of life in general. But he he's smart. And so he's got to find his way in this crazy new world when really all he wants to do is get back to modern-day Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. Can't blame him there. You know, who wouldn't want hot showers and, and um, working technology, etc., and not battles to the death? But that is the beginning of the book. And so let's go ahead and turn now to the interview with David, and he will tell you more about the book. Again, it is called Ignatius and the Swords of Nostaw, and the author is D.A. Nucci. Hi, David. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. And thank you for having me on, Sarah. I'm very happy to have you here. And um, we are here to talk about your new book. Before we get to the book, though, um, if you would share a little bit about yourself, I would love that for my listeners to get to know you a little bit. Sure. Well, I'm um, 67, going to be 68 soon. And I am an emergency room physician. I have I'm in my 39th year in the emergency room, uh, which is quite a long time for longevity. And one of the reasons my wife says I've lasted so long, she says, I'm ADHD and the emergency room is my Ritalin. (laughs) She says, when I come home real calm after a shift, she said, you had a busy shift. (laughs) And um, I asked her why. She said, because you you thrive on the, the the chaos in the emergency room. And when we have a slow day, I come home and I'm kind of fidgety. She says, well, maybe you need a cup of coffee or two. So I, I love being an emergency room physician. And uh, in July, I actually cut back. I went into semi-retirement. I'm only working five shifts a month and I am spending the rest of my time writing. Well, that is a wonderful and and long career in the ER. I I um I said before we started recording that I uh, I could talk forever about uh, our topic of conversation involving snow, and now I could talk. I could ask you a million questions about working in the ER, but ask away. I, I won't. <laughs> I mean, <Okay. laughs> because you know we are here to talk about your book, so we should do that. Okay. Um, the book is called Ignatius and the Swords of. Say the word for me. Nastau. Nastau. Okay. Um, it's Watson spelled backwards, which is a story in of itself. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Ignatius and the Sword of Nastau. So start with Watson spelled backwards and why you chose that title. Well, uh, the I was looking for a um, a creature who was mythical and uh, basically a badass warrior. And we had a puppy dog, a Shih Tzu named Watson. And Watson thought he was really a real mean, not mean, but, you know, a ferocious puppy. He never bit anybody, but, and he had this smush little Shih Tzu face. And he would go up to other dogs that were three times his size and go, woof, 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 woof. And the dogs would look at Watson and just shrug their shoulders and say, we can't be bothered with this and walk away. And Dot Watson would prance back like, you know, and looking like a bulldog, it's like I told them. So Watson passed on and he crossed over the Rainbow Bridge. And when I was writing this book, I said, I need a mythical warrior race. And I started thinking of Watson. It was like, he always wanted to be a badass dog. So, and he never was. So I'm going to turn him into a badass warrior. So I flipped the words around and spelled Watson Bass backwards. And that's how I came across Nastow. <laughs> 
I love that. I, I have a Chihuahua that is very similar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he thinks he can take on German shepherds and exactly. um, he doesn't believe me that he's a snack to them. So <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's like Watson, you would just be an appetizer for these dogs. Just stop it. Exactly. Can you give an overview of the story? Yeah, that actually is difficult. Um, because it's a journey. The, um, it's gonna be a multi-book um, series. And the, the, the easiest way to give an overview is to give the standard elevator pitch. Um, it, and, and it's been hard because in my brain, I have this epic adventure that, that spans a couple of years. And how do you compress that down to a couple of words? And so basically my elevator pitch is Iggy, it, it, the, it, his name is Ignatius, but he goes by Iggy. That's what he likes to be called. So Iggy is a 15 year old boy prepared for high school, but is he prepared to fight mythical creatures, dark magic wizards, and to be involved in sword fights where people actually die. And all he wants to do is get back to his normal time of present day Pennsylvania. So the story is about Iggy's adventure of growth. It's a coming of age. Um, it's following this boy to manhood uh, where he has to learn a lot and grow a lot. And it's, uh, it, people ask me, is it plot driven or character dri driven? Originally I started it as plot driven. So I have this fantastical plot that I've made up. But as I started writing it, it is more character driven and, than anything else. And um, readers that read it now really get into the different characters. And so that's basically an overview of it. Yeah, it. I, I find with um, fantasy, it's anytime you try to explain a fantasy, especially a series that's long running to someone else, it always comes across sounding just crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hard to explain just the, the scope of a fantasy, of a fantasy and, book. And, and my wife and kids like, Dad, you're going to be 68. You're writing a, a young adult lit fantasy. You know, I said, well, I'm going to be 68, but I feel like I'm 25. And my wife's like, eh, you don't look 25. Oh, no. <laughs> Your and she, no punches. And she, yeah, and she reads it. She's she read the first book, and she's like, "Do I need to sleep with a knife under my pillow?" <laughs> wow. <laughs> she's like, "There is a lot more going on in that mind than I ever thought." <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, can you uh, talk about your inspiration for the story? Besides, of course, Watson. But um, can you talk about the inspiration for the overall story? Yeah, you know, well, there, there's two aspects to that. One, which will, which I'll, I'll try to circle back, being a physician in the ER during the pandemic. But the original inspiration, um, my wife and I love to travel. And my two children are adopted um, from, uh, from Guatemala. And um, as they grew, we would, you know, being a physician, my wife and I were lucky. We had opportunity to travel to places, um, take our kids to um, places where they stayed in high-class hotels, ate in high-class restaurants, visited places, but we just didn't want them to see that, as, that, that that was life. We wanted them to see what real life was about and that my wife and I worked really hard to get to the, where we were. So we did a lot of traveling in Latin America, uh, Costa Rica, Guatemala. My wife and I um, have been to other countries, you know, before we had children that were, well, some would, would say un, underdeveloped. So while we were in these countries, I would be, you know, it, it kind of gelled over time. I would look at them and say, these people are extremely happy. They don't realize, you know, you know that there's, a, well, they do, but they're happy in their life without the technology, the stress, and they're just really enjoy, you know, enjoying it. And then it came down to, well, we see a lot of times when 
books that authors, they'll take someone from an underdeveloped time or an underdeveloped area and put them in more technologically advanced societies and cultures and how they grow and adapt and, and live their life. But what would happen if we took, if we reversed it and we took someone from modern times who uh, is technologically savvy, has science that had never been invented way back when, um, you know, centuries and centuries and centuries ago, but also made it so that they were wimpy and been bullied and didn't know how to stick up for themselves. And we take them and we put them back into a medieval, I, I just kind of picked a medieval time. How would they survive? How would they, would they, would they survive? Would they die? Would they have to learn to what knowledge they can? I mean, clearly in that time as a 15 year old boy, he is the most intelligent person in this land. But all these intelligent people that spread their intelligent were labeled as dark magic wizards and they were burned at the stake. So how would this young man survive? So that was the kind of inspiration. And then I looked at, he's wimpy, he has no confidence. And if you don't have that back in medieval time, you didn't survive. So it's kind of, it built in the growth of this young man. So that was the inspiration of the book, basically. It's time to take our first break of the podcast, but oh my goodness, basing a character on your little tiny, brave dog who has, you know, small dog syndrome. I love that. <laughs> uh, my small dog that has small dog syndrome is named Chalupa. And so I don't even want to try to figure that out right now, what his name backwards would be. I'd have to write it down and figure it out, but it could be a good fantasy name. I don't know. Um, let's go ahead and take that first break. When we come back, we'll be talking more about Iggy and his, his, his bravery or lack thereof and his uh, other skills that will hopefully help him out in this new world. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author D.A. Mucci about his debut novel, the first in a series, the first in the Ignatius series. Again, it is called Ignatius and the Swords of Nostal. Let's return to the, ser- the interview. Yeah, there's definitely the, the hero's journey arc to it, but um, Iggy starts out with even... Well, more advantages in that he he is from a different time, but that's also a disadvantage. Plus, he's he's just not brave. Um, poor no. thing. <laughs> and no, so he's not. he's, uh, he's uh, someone that has a sign on his back that says "Pick on me." Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and he wasn't one to stick up to against the bullies, but what he had learned in his survival skills before he was transported back to this medieval times was he was very bright and he used his intelligence to get out of many situations. And that's one of the things that he uses uh, back in once he's in the kingdom of sky to survive and that builds his confidence. And so, you know, that was one of the things we tried to enrich into our children that you might not be the best in this or the best in that, but believe in yourself, have confidence in yourself. Don't let anybody tell you who you can be or what you can accomplish. It's up to you. And, you know, sit back and step back and think about it and you can do it. And so for Iggy as a main character, then um, what about him do you think will resonate most with readers? 
it's interesting. I've had readers have fallen in love with Iggy and, you know, men who have texted me that they write back and say, I'm an, I'm a grown adult. And I look at Iggy and some of the things he went through and had to deal with, you know, I went through those things myself growing up. Um, you know, he has to learn to deal with girls. You know, he, here's, this, here's this kid who has never held hands, kissed a girl, and only look, talked to girls because he's afraid of them. And that resonates with a lot of men. Um, and the kindness and the gentleness of him and the, uh, the insecurity and um, that seems to, to resonate in the female population. So I, I don't know, Iggy has struck a chord across all boundaries from young kids all the way up to, I had an 85 year old um, gentleman who, mind you, he's a friend, say, I don't like fantasy books. But once I started reading about Iggy, I wanted to find out what happened to him. He was a real cool character and you felt for him. You wanted him to succeed. And, and it's not one of these, he wins every battle, emotionally, physically, or intellectually. But it's like, yeah, you, 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 you root for the guy. And that rooting for the guy brings people into the story. One of my favorite parts about the, the very beginning of, well, toward the beginning of the book, when Iggy first ends up in sky is that he has to travel either by foot or horseback and he mm -hmm. spends an inordinate amount of time complaining about how much his butt hurt yeah. <laughs> which is completely realistic but most of the time yeah. it's like you know okay we have to ride a horse for two days and they just do it right so what i tr what i tried to do is after i wrote every scene <clears throat> every chapter i went back and first i would write the chapter straight through or a couple of chapters straight through. And then I would step back and say, okay, let's go back scene by scene, um, conversation by conversation. And what, what would really happen? What would the emotions be? What would the real conversation be? And how would this kid really react? And how would these people from medieval times react to Iggy? And so then I, you know, I, I tried to really put some some human emotion in it. And I, and I think that's what people have been attracted to the story and bonded with the characters because it's not just like, yeah, Iggy, Iggy got on the horse and he rode exactly as you were saying. It's like, fine, but hurts. You know? And I've never been on a horse in my life and I don't like it, you know? And so I, I try to look at every character and then, infuse some realism. What would it be really like back then? Not what I want it to be like, what would it be really like? And so th that that seems to bring readers into being able to, you know, to, to say, you know, I, 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 can, I can really identify with this character or that character, you know, or, or some of the other characters. Mm -hmm. And speaking of characters then, when you started writing, did you have a did you have characters sort of fleshed out or did they develop as you write? How did that work for your particular writing process? No, you know, I, I didn't. So uh, I would, I would bring Iggy first thing. I would love to get home because I would want to write to find out what was going to happen to Iggy. I would, I'd have, I, I had the whole story, the whole multiple book story mapped out. But as I found as I wrote it, Iggy took me on an adventure sometimes that I didn't even foresee. And it's kind of existentialistic strange, but as I was writing, it's like, man, I didn't see that coming, but let's follow this thread. Let's see where this goes. And then I'd have characters come in and I would ask myself, okay, wh what's this character how is he going to interact? And do I know someone or have I met someone in my life that would really be cool with their, that, 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 that I could inject into this so that I just didn't want stick figures. I tried to look at people all through my life that I have met that made an impression on me 
for one good or bad. And I would say, this is going to be this character. And I know this person and I have a, a, a love for this person or a visceral hate for this person in real life so that I could really inject some realism into it. So as, as I go along, it's every character is someone from my past uh, or, or, or present. And so I, I kind of, I, I stop and I search who do I know that could fit into this, that could make it really exciting? And, and that's how I go about doing it. I, I just don't say, well, I'm going to make up this character. He's going to have this trait and that trait and this trait, because I don't know that person. Every character in the in this book, I know and I've met somewhere along in my life. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, has anybody recognized themselves? No, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> They'll, they'll, they'll be a, a couple of people from high school that will probably say, was that me? <laughs> and I'm going to my 50th high school reunion soon, um, you know, next year in the, in, the, in the fall. And I'm waiting for someone to come up and say, that was me, wasn't it? And I'm like, well, maybe. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> not really, right. <laughs> How about research? Uh, did you do any particular types of research for the, the writing? Um, well, two aspects of that. I did a lot of research into how to write um, because I, I never think of myself as an experienced writer. So um, it's been, I, I wrote two prior books back in the late 1990s and the early 2000s, and they were terrible. You know, they, they were like, they were good stories, but there was no writing skills whatsoever. So over you know, the, the 15, 18 years uh, from then until now, I took a lot of writing courses, how to write, how to write a sentence, um, how to write scenes, how to, how to script plots, how to weave plots. So I did a lot of research for myself. Um, I go to seminars and um, book writing classes. But as far as the research into where the where the book takes place, um, to me, medieval times means England. That's just that's just me. So I did a lot of research with Google, and I became very good friends. And I just kind of researched all around England, Wales, and Scotland. And then this little isle came up, the Isle of Skye. And as I really researched it. It's a fascinating place filled with medieval folklore, pre-medieval folklore, tales, um, uh, fairy tales of all these creatures and, and the lore behind it. And, you know, looking at it, there were, there were fair, there are actually rainbow fairy pools where the water is, is so crystal clear that the rock Behind it, that's all different colors, shines through it and gives the water a rainbow color. There are fields of moss that when you walk on it, it feels like mossy sponge that go on for field after field after field. And so I was like, this is where I'm going to build my, my kingdom. And so the Isle of Skye became the kingdom of Skye. And a lot of the folklore from the real Isle of Skye, I have... Uh, written into the kingdom of sky. And of course I built other, um, uh, other kingdoms, Di Dinus Afferon, Cambria, and Matreach. And all of those um, are, uh, are steeped in the folklore of the Isle of Sky. So I extended it further and expanded upon it. You wrote about characters, you know, people that you know, you kind of incorporated them into characters. How about yourself? Do you appear in any character in the book? Everyone asks that. Um, well, let's just say I'm Iggy. <laughs> That's why um, I can really bond with him and really put a sense of, of personalness into it as I write. Um, everything that happened to Iggy that's written in the, 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 the chapters that he was in high school, short of the knife fight, were actually happened to me. 
And so those, those are basic true tales. And, um, you know, really, it, it, it's not um, exaggerated too much what happened to him. So, um, you know, um, the, the only difference is, you know, back in the 60s, um, you know, uh, we didn't have the technology back then. So the technology aspect is new, but all the emotions and all of the, the bullying, the, the fear of women and the things that happened to him in class were real things that happened to me. So it was very easy. In fact, I put so much into it. My wife read it and said, you got to cut 90% of this out. Um, you know, I know that, that you know, it, it's your high school, but if, after the first few things, people don't want to read about that. And move, move the story on a little further. So I hit the alt-delete button on a lot of chapters. <laughs> Well, hopefully you saved them in case, you know, they can come in handy somewhere else. Definitely. They have been saved to a hard drive, which I won't tell my wife where it is because I don't want her to delete them. <laughs> Your secret is safe with me. <laughs> Time for our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we will be discussing the many ways you can mispronounce the phrase Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author D.A. Mucci about his new book, Ignatius and the Swords of Nosta. Let's return to the interview. This is a slightly random, but um, I, you, you mentioned before we started recording that you are you live in Connecticut now. Um, the book initially takes place before he goes to Sky in Correct. Pennsylvania. Did you choose Susquehanna for a a reason other than the fact that it's <laughs> possible to pronounce it 852 different ways when <laughs> yeah you know that that was my wife's idea originally it was going to be Wilkes-Barre Pennsylvania because my wife was born in Wilkes-Barre <clears throat> and we had visited you know her extended family there and the the description of the town was more of the, not the, the nicer side of Wilkes-Barre. You know, it was an old cold mining town. People worked hard. They were phenomenal blue collar workers, but you know, it was downtrodden because the, the coal industry, um, you know, uh, bottomed out there and there was a lot of poverty there in that one area of Wilkes-Barre. And she's like, you can't do this because my my relatives are going to get mad because you're presenting it, you know, like this downtrodden. And I don't want everyone to think of Wilkes-Barre about that. She said, you know, it's in the Susquehanna Valley and there's a river there. Why don't we use Susquehanna? You know, and I said, OK, it's fine with me. So we changed it. And then changing it allowed me to use all those play on words in, in the Kingdom of Sky, which, you know, when, when I listen to the audio book um, that's out, uh, I, I, even though I know it's coming, I laugh because it was such a fun play on words. Well, now I want to check out the audio book, but yes, I laughed uh, every time, especially the, the, the first character that Iggy runs into, every time he would try to say, 
Okay. Yeah, look here. <laughs> you came up yeah. with some good with some good um, phrases <laughs> to sound like Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and it, it was just so much fun just writing that, and and those you know those things just as I was writing, I, again they came instantaneously. You know, I was in Lequeux's head, and as I was walking, what would he say? What would he do? He'd be confused. And it just came out. And I was like, Janie, come here. I got to tell you what Lequeux is going to, what's he going to call it? And I told her, she looks at me, she says, you're kidding me. And then she starts laughing. She said, that's perfect. <laughs> what do you think um, draws you to writing in this genre, young adult fantasy? Well, as I said, I'm going to be 68 soon, and I've never grown up. You know, I, I've read, you know, I started reading um, Tom Clancy books and Clive Cussler, and I found that as our kids were growing, um, we would take long car trips, and we would put audio books on, and they would be young adult, young, young YA lit, then young adult um, fantasies. And I found them just very relaxing and entertaining. And being an emergency room physician, sometimes you just need to go away to a faraway place. And because I work in a, in a trauma center, and it can get really crazy you know, physically and emotionally, you know, the stuff that you're dealing with. Um, and way before the pandemic started, I found that I would just, they would just totally relaxation. I, I would, I would relax and I would just go off into these fantasy world, worlds and be totally entertained. And if the author could make me believe in this world of fantasy that he or she were writing, it was great. And so it just became a natural thing to write because it, it's something that I enjoyed reading. And I didn't even realize, I didn't, I didn't say, I'm going to write a fantasy book, uh, a young adult fantasy book. It was just something that evolved because of my taste, basically. Makes sense. Thank you. You mentioned that you that, that it's multi-book. Do you know how many books there will be, or do you just have an endpoint in mind and we'll keep writing until you get there? Well, right now I'm planning five books, um, and be, because every book is going to follow, I, I don't want to give away you know, a, a spoiler, but every book is going to follow one year of Iggy. Um, as he grows. So right now it's going to be five books, but as, as the books go, they're probably going to get longer and longer and longer. So I might have to, you know, by the time I get to the fourth book or the fifth book, they might have to be split into two volumes. So it's because it, the, the adventure is going to be, it, it's not just, you're not just going to be following Iggy. All of these characters, well, some of the characters are going to have adventures of their own, and I've tried to um, um, present them and uh, to the reader so that you're interested in them. And it's going to be they're going off on adventures. They're going to cross paths. It's going to intersect. They're going to go off again, and then it's going to come back into the final chapter where everything ends. But it, it could be longer because some of the other uh, characters have worlds and and lives that they're going to uh, hopefully the the reader is going to want to get involved in also so the answer is maybe five maybe more um, I, I don't think it's going to be less um, so again we'll see where it takes us thank you um, that I was laughing when you were saying. Uh, five but they're gonna get longer as they go on you're such a fantasy author yeah <laughs> I can say that about I mean because if I put down everything that's in my mind it could go on for about 10 books and my wife's like nah you just can't do that you know <laughs> eventually you're going to have to type the end <laughs> we, we need clo your readers need closure <laughs> yeah and I think I think she's going to need closure too <laughs> So you've been um, a physician, an ER physician for 
decades. What Many. made what made you decide then to sit down and write? Uh, not only write, but then write for publication. Well, you know, we, we're it was the pandemic basically. So uh, people, I'm sure they they realize, but unless you were in the emergency room during the height of the pandemic, you really can't get a flavor for what it was like. Um, we would go from, you know, sitting around, you know, we could chit, chit chat with the patients, chit chat with their family, you know, give them multiple updates. We're all in a cluster around our workstation. Now, all of a sudden, visitors were banned um, uh, to go into a room. You were in, you know, tremendous protective gear. Um, your colleague was minimum six feet away. You were afraid to even interact with them. After you get out of the protective gear, you have to go into other protective gear just to go down, you know, to sit at your workstation and type up the chart. So everything was, I, I, I had colleagues that got COVID in the beginning and, you know, one of them at a sister hospital passed away. Nurses got COVID, uh, doctors, got it, but, you know, it got real sick, but didn't pass away. I, I saw patients come in and, and, you know, one guy walked in three hours later, he's on a ventilator three hours later, he had passed away and he was a young, healthy, otherwise healthy person. And you didn't have the ability to bond with your patient or your family because everything was so, I mean, you're talking to a patient with a N95 mask on, uh, another mask on top of it, a shield, a hood, you're wearing a protective gown, double glove, and there's no, and, and the, the, there, there's no personalness in there. And then, you know, if something tragic happened, you couldn't sit down with the family member and, you know, um, be compassionate with them, you know, uh, bond with them and talk with them. They'd be out in the wait. Uh, they wouldn't even weren't even allowed in the waiting room. They would be out in the car, and you'd have to call on a cell phone and say, "Hi, I'm Dr. Mucci. I know you've never met me, and your husband walked in, but it's now six hours later, and I have to tell you he's passed away. And no, you can't come in to see him. You can't go to the morgue. You can't do a viewing. It, 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 the it, the the stress on the healthcare staff." The, the PTSD that I saw amongst nurses and doctors was tremendous. I would drive home, I would strip down uh, in the middle of the winter in my garage, which was not heated. And my family would be on, uh, because my children moved home because you know it was the safest place. They didn't know what kind of filter system at, at the places where they would live in were. So they, my wife and them would be on one side of the house. I'd run up the back stairs uh, naked because everything was bagged out in the garage, shower and shave, my, my shower and change. My wife had set out, you know, scr um, scrubs or, you know, um, sweats, I mean to say. I would get into that. I'd go down the back stairs and I would hibernate in the library. And I would quarantine and isolate from my family for like four months. And so, and food would be set out in there and, I, and we'd wave, there's a, a window in the door between the library and the family room. We'd wave and we'd talk through the window. And my wife, you know, she would call me on her cell phone. I'd be a room away on my cell phone. She says, well, what are you doing? I said, well, you know, I'm what, binge watching TV. I'm playing a video game on my phone. She said, why don't you write that book that you've always been talking about? That fantasy story that you've been telling us you know, about dribs and drabs for the last 10 years, you know, pull it all together and write it. So I would come home and that would be, you know, some of the, the healthcare workers, you know, got real bad PTSD because they didn't know how to escape. And writing Ignatius, uh, the first book of the Ignatius series was my escape. And I found that what, what started out as therapy turned into fun and a passion. I would drive home and it's like, I got to get to writing because I got to see where the story is going to take me. I think I know, but I was, as I would write it, it would, as I would say earlier, it would take a turn that I never expected just because I was totally involved in the scenes 
And I wasn't even in my library anymore. I was just writing, 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 and I couldn't write fast enough. And it really became a fun, passionate thing. And for me, that was my therapy. And that's what got me through the hard times of the pandemic was Iggy and Ignatius and the Swords of Nastow. You know, it was a, it was a fun story to write. Well, first of all, thank you, because I know that the last two years plus have just been insanely hard for the healthcare industry. So thank, well, thank you for you. everything. I appreciate that. Um, but also, it's wonderful that you were able to find Iggy and, you know, thank you to your wife for making the suggestion, yeah. but just to, because I know that that had to have been a huge part of being able to get through the last couple of years and with, with some modicum of sanity. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm really lucky. My wife, we've been married, Jeannie and I have been married 28 years. And, you know, I have to tell you that I, I'm still in awe of her. I wake up every day and look at her and it's like, and why did you marry me? You're, <laughs> you're the most intelligent woman I've ever met in my life. You know, you could be, you know, you could be in anything. And so it's like, I am so blessed to have her in my life and she is so smart and she knows what I need. She knows what our children, you know, needed growing up and still as young adults. And, you know, I, I would be lost without her. I'm just very lucky and blessed to have her in my life. And she knew exactly what I needed to get through this. And she was right, you know? So I'm, I'm very lucky that she, I'm lucky for her wisdom. It's time to take our last break of the podcast, but I really love how David talks about his wife and she is so much a part of the writing of this book, which is just wonderful. Um, they seem to have a very sweet relationship. So let's go ahead and take that final break. And when we come back, David will be giving his advice for people who might want to write their own fantasy book or their own novel in general. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author D.A. Mucci. From your own experience, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Yeah, it's simple. Do it. Just write. There is, there's a nurse that I work with who is an aspiring author. And she's like, well, I, I, I get into these, these writer's block. And I don't know what to write. And I said, just write. I said, you can always go back and delete that beginning, rewrite that beginning. But what you'll find is as you're writing, the, the story flows, the juices flow, and, and all of a sudden you're into it. And you can always you know, correct the beginning. So anybody that wants to write, heck, I did it. I, I was terrible in English in high school. And yeah, I, 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 I did a lot of research, a lot of writing courses, but I decided that's what I wanted to do. So, and no one was gonna hold me back. And I think that, you know, to my children, that is, you know, something I tell them, don't let anybody, not even yourself, put blocks on what you can or can't be, become. You know, if you wanna do it, it might be hard, but you can do it if you really want to do it. And no one but you can stop you from, from being what you want to become, what you want to do. And same thing for inspiring authors, you know, write it. And if you enjoy it, if it's passionate, and if you put your passion into it, it'll be good. 
and people will enjoy it. You know, write for yourself. And if you do that and you put your, your heart and soul into it, people will recognize that and they'll get into it also. So my the, the, the bottom line is, if you want to be an author, right, just do it. Just like the Nike ad. Um, yeah, I guess so. Didn't even think of that. <laughs> uh, the prevalence of advertising. Um, yeah. You mentioned um, Clive Cussler, uh, those types of authors. When you read for yourself and do you tend to turn to young adult or do you have other, who are your go-to authors? Oh, I, I love Neil Gaiman, uh, Ian Kofi. Um, um, I always want to pronounce the name wrong because I'm terrible with names. Um, the Cass Claire, Cassandra Claire, Claire Cassandra. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Cassandra the Claire, I'm yeah. ruining your name. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I um, the uh, I love the Artemis Fowl series. I'm just starting the uh, Twin Fowler series, where the younger bro the twin brothers grow up. Um, uh, oh, the, um, um, the 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 author of the um, Nicholas Flamel series. Um, oh my goodness! Oh yeah, shoot. Yeah, it'll, I am it'll come so, to both of us when we're done. <laughs> I am so bad with names. Yeah, after the interview is over, it's going to be, yeah, that's his name. And then the, the poor guy's probably going to be like, oh, you're, you're butchering my name too. <laughs> so, so it's fantasy books. Uh, you know, I just, yeah. I just pick them up and I just enjoy reading them. But those are the ones that are my go-to and I just enjoy. Uh, they entertain me and they relax me. Mm-hmm. In terms of your internet presence, um, website, any social media you're available on? Yeah, um, well, I, I, I have a, a website, D-A-Mucci, that's D-A-M-U-C-C-I dot com. And I'm on Facebook under D period, A period, space, M-U-C-C-I. For some reason, you have to put the space there. And the same thing on Instagram, D period, A period, space, M-U-C-C-I. Um, you know, we've we've had a lot of great people help out, um, you know, in the marketing and the social media. Um, I, I, I kudos to my author, Theodore Bryant um, from uh, Book Editing Associates. You know, she's one tough cookie and, you know, she's like. You, you, I, I, you, you need work and we'll, we'll work. With you. So I'm thankful she's stuck in, hung in there with me and she's uh, looking forward to taking a look at book two that I'm, I'm knee deep into writing right now. Um, the web designers, um, you know, the, 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 we have, one of the things my son did, he said, dad, you have to make this more interactive. So on the website, we have a map and if you hover over certain hot spots and click on it, it'll bring you and tell you about that area on the map that's important in the book. And, he, and I've never really seen this before. He said, put QR codes in the book. So as people are reading along, you know, you're talking about these creatures and places, they can hold their phone up and it'll, they can look at the picture through the QR code and that'll bring it more to life. I never thought of doing that. And people have, uh, you know, readers have texted me, emailed me. Those QR codes were cool because now I can see what you, you know, I, I can yes. visualize what you were talking about, but it's, it's, it's so much more fun to see it, you know? Thank you for bringing that up because I had made a note and then I totally forgot to mention the QR codes. I, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'd not experienced that before, but yeah, it's always fun to see what the author is envisioning as opposed to yeah. what, what's in your own head. Yeah, and I work with the illustrators. I mean, they they have, um, if you go to the, the website, the, the pictures of the, the castles and the creatures are exactly how I had envisioned and hopefully, you know, wrote about in the book so that the readers can, can visualize them also. And I, I must say, and I will tell everybody, there are no dragons in this series. I refuse to have dragons. Everybody puts dragons, but there are tippies 
and tippies are far more dangerous than dragons. <laughs> That's a little plug for the book. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> David, we've talked about a variety of different topics today, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you were hoping to highlight during our time together? Now, I, only that young or old, I hope everyone just enjoys the story. You know, I broke a few editorial norms in writing the book. And one of the things that, you know, I, 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 I switched some point of views purposely in scenes because I want the reader to get to know what other characters are thinking and feeling. And, you know, one of the editorials, you know, comments that I've seen is, you know, you really can't do this. But then I remember an article I read by Neil Gaiman. And he said, you're the author if you can write it so that your reader enjoys it. Don't let anyone tell you about a little editorial or literature faux pas that you're breaking. If, uh, if readers enjoy it, you have succeeded. And I just hope everyone enjoys the book. It's a, it's a fantastical book and it's a coming of age book. And I and I want them along with me to enjoy the journey of Iggy as he grows from book to book. Well, I know I'm looking forward to finding out more about Iggy and watching him as he. I know he's gonna he's gonna get braver, continue to get braver, but seeing mm -hmm. seeing what forms that takes. Right. Yeah. Um, so, David, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, it's Christmas weekend. Thank you so much for taking the time thank to talk you. to me about your book. Thank you so much for, for, thank you for taking the time to have me on. I really appreciate it. And I've really enjoyed talking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much once again to David for joining me to talk about Ignatius and the Swords of Nosta and the beginning of this series. I think it's going to be so much fun, no matter how many books it ends up being. There was a point in there in there where we were talking about the books that he likes to read and we were trying to come up with the name of the author of the Nicholas Flamel series and I don't think we ever did. Um, so that author is Michael Scott. For those of you who were wondering and for also for those of you who were yelling at your uh, whatever you're listening to this podcast on, uh, you know, not yelling at the screen, but yelling at your earbuds or whatever. <laughs> Michael Scott. It's Michael Scott. So. Uh, just in case you were wondering, there is that information for you. Thank you again to David. I really appreciate it, like I said, because it was Christmas weekend and uh, because this book is so much fun and definitely looking forward to more with Ignatius. Uh, I really do want to see how he grows. And of course, he's going to become braver, but I want to see how he does that and how much, you know, how much of that is bravery and how much of that is, is his, you know, just using his his brains and his abilities, his uh, abilities with language and <laughs> witty comebacks, but, you know, verbal skills as much as anything else. Of course, he's going to use the swords and get better at those, but yeah, looking forward to that. Hope you will also join me for the next interview when I am speaking with author Kevin Moore about his new book, also the first in a series. It is called The Book of Souls. Very different from Ignatius, but, um, no, not, not fantasy exactly, but in the paranormal supernatural realm. So join me on Friday for that interview. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. In the meantime, if you're a fan of this podcast, as always, if you have not done so, please do leave a review of the podcast on whatever platform you listen to the podcast on. That can be starred, that can be written. It can be a one word sentence, but any review helps to get this podcast out to more people. So I would be very grateful if you could leave a review. Also follow us on social media us, I don't know, me and the authors, yes, we'll go with that. Uh, follow the podcast on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Hope you're having a wonderful week. This week between Christmas and New Year's, you know, some people uh, have it off, which is wonderful. If you have it off, I hope you're enjoying it. If you are still going into work, I hope you're enjoying the uh, fact that traffic is less <laughs> during this time. But whatever you're doing, I hope that you are having a good week and that that week affords you plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. 
part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.